Oh, okay. That's a good one. New Chris says, it's just like, how do you reject the narcissist who seems so amazing to everyone else? She's like a celebrity. Makes me feel she's right when she says I'm the problem. Well, that's difficult when you get somebody that is incredibly charming and that there's this uh, kind of mask that they wear to the public where they're one person, but then to you, things are very different. It, and to me, it goes back to at the end of the day, if this is a relationship where there's, there's a lot of perpetual confusion where you're like, is it her? Is it me? Like, I don't think it's me. All of that waffling back and forth, just that alone is not worth being in because it's not worth that mental anguish. It's that, and also you can use that concept of a constant. So, you know, you've heard us talk about this before, but getting, thinking about that person, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a sibling, maybe it was somebody, I don't know, so, I don't know, somebody else that you know that you feel calm around. Like you don't second guess their intentions. You're not, you don't, you're not spun into that introspection where you're like, is it me? Is it her? It, like what's going on where you feel safe, secure, like you can be yourself, take yourself, get yourself to that place, get grounded enough and think about how you are with that person that you feel constant around. And then think about how you feel with her because emotional manipulators it's this continual, it's their behavior. It's erratic, dramatic, and emotional. And it knocks a person off balance continually. And sometimes there's periods where things are fine. And then all of a sudden, boom, things are really not fine. And then it's all kinds of, all of a sudden communication just goes off the rails and you know, you don't know what's going on and you're like, I don't, I don't get it. You know, but like you were saying to everybody else, this, this woman seems great, but to you, it's not at the end of the day, that's all that matters. If there's a saying out there, you know, to, uh, to avoid being around people that make you feel like that make you feel like you're difficult to love. There's a lot of truth in that, you know? So, and I think too, the more you can educate yourself about different forms of abuse, especially more covert forms. Uh, so I would, I would do a lot of reading or not, you know, a lot of reading, but I would do some reading on like emotional abuse, psychological abuse, verbal abuse, because it really can help to have the words to describe what you're experiencing. I hope that helps. The, if you're looking for like verbal and emotional kind of stuff, the book, uh, The Verbally Abusive Relationship by Patricia Evans is fantastic. And she really covers a lot of both covert and overt kind of stuff that happens. You know, my book that I wrote, the book uh, Start Here, which you can find it on Amazon if you just do a search for Dana Morningstar on Amazon, that covers, I don't even know, I don't even know, 40 or 50 or so different definitions with examples of different situations that might help as well to kind of figure out what's going on. Because it can, it can be difficult when you're in the middle of it seeing things clearly. Mm -hmm.